when we're doing it. Yep. Today we're going to talk about uh, public law and private law. That's the subject matter for today. Episode information. Let's put that back up here for a second. Yeah. Public and private jurisdiction. Now, we all are looking at all of the madness that's going on across America. We don't have to zero in on any specific city. Black males are catching hell wherever they are in U.S. of A. I told you, well, I've been talking about this uh, supersonic change that's, that's here now, that's been coming ever since Obama's been in office. The Europeans knew it was coming, and he set it up so that we would have a black, uh, so be a black in color, black president in the White House so that we would take, as Malcolm would say, it's like a, a sedative. We would take this harassment and and keep a smile on their face because the president, they're picking on the president, all of that negative uh, uh, bullshit that we are caught up in. And the bottom line is we're catching more hell under under Obama than we are under all of the presidents put together. And now they got us in such a fix since we are so uh, peaceful. They got us in such a fix that now when he gets out of office, Whoever goes in, they're going to say, well, why should we do something for you when you didn't ask for it, when, the, when you had a black president, you didn't ask for it. It's an old trick. All they're doing is buying time. You are suffering because they are buying time. You're not changing. You're not educating yourself. You're not preparing yourself for freedom. Most of you are going to church every day praying harder and harder and harder. And the and the European is killing more and more and more. It's 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 a dilemma, it's a dichotomy, it's a it's a it's madness what they're doing. And it's coming from the system itself. Anytime you have a system that's corrupt, whoever is in the system is also corrupt. So let, we can stop talking black and white. We can stop talking about the pick of wood, although we know that he was instrumental in setting it up. But I'm not really sure about that. Like I tell you, the more I study, the more I can see what's going on. The name of the game is United States of America, Inc. It's a plantation, a cash cow. And the purpose of the cash cow is to make uh, rich people richer. The international banksters are cleaning up, but they also know that their time is up. And now they're trying to blame all of their ignorance, stupidity, arrogance, racism, trying to blame it on terrorism. I was listening to Ron Paul today, of all peck of woods to listen to. I happened to turn over because his subject title was very interesting, and that was the financial the financial crisis that's coming is going is not going to be anything compared to the social climate that's coming. You know, I I want to scream because you guys are so dumb and so stupid, so ignorant, so religious and with Christianity that you just can't see the truth or you can't see the trees for the forest. And now when all hell breaks loose, you're going to say, oh, Lord, oh, Lord, we should have, should have, would have, could have. I've been trying for the last, well, I'm not going there because he's not, I, I'm not the, 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 the giver or the reliever. I'm not the one that has all the power. All I'm supposed to do is try and raise your consciousness so you can see what I see. And it's, it's, it's getting to be disgraceful. I am getting a lot of phone calls, but it's becoming very disgraceful because you still refuse to read. You won't read. I give you my, my website. I ask you to go to my website. Just I put the articles on there. That's going to save your life. You still call me and ask me all kind of crazy-ass questions. Tie up my day 
on something that you should learn. You cannot be free unless you free yourself. I can teach you or show you where freedom is, but you got to walk in on your own. And if you don't know what you're doing, you'll be in slavery as soon as you get into freedom. It's madness. It's really a game of madness. Now, I've been talking about, I I call it polyan, but I think y'all call it monopoly. There used to be a game by Fisher Brothers named Polly Ann. I, I don't know why that keeps coming, but Monopoly. The Monopoly is what they've been using on you ever since 1933. There is no real money. None. None. Had a guy tell me, well, if it ain't real, give me all that phony money. I can do this do that. That's an idiot. I walked away from it. I said, we don't have The conversation's over. I'm not going to waste my time talking to you. Money's not going to solve this thing, ladies and gentlemen. The only thing that can solve it is your mind. I had a good conversation uh, over the weekend with a 44-year-old devout Christian, and I call it good because I told him a new ass, believe me. But he was gracious enough, and I had to back off a little bit because he did want to learn. He was caught between the rock and the hard place. And I know, coming from Liza Muhammad, anytime you destroy one's belief, you better be prepared to to repair it with something of value, or you, you the individual will turn violent. That's why Liza Muhammad would always search all of their uh, uh, people when they come into the temples. Because he was his truth was so strong, Malcolm's truth was so strong that it made people angry. I've had that experience, and it's not a pleasant experience. So as I noticed that he was becoming angry, I began to back up and then plug all of my devastation on him with truth. And when the conversation was over, he told me, he said, I lost this one. I said, yes, you did. And this was just a test. And you kept challenging me, and you know I'm not going to back, back down. So as a result, you need to go back and do some more study. Take it back to them damn preachers that you talked to and ask them that I'd say anything I say was wrong. Or ask them, is there another way to heaven than that bullshit they teach you over there? Just ask them that question. We only know what they've taught us, and they've only had a 586 timetable. Everything we discuss is black folks, black on black, black on white, white on black. It doesn't matter. We're only in a a measly 586-year so-called story, his story, because he made us go to school and learn the bull crap. A bunch of crap. That's what it is. Nothing but a bunch of crap. Anything outside of the 586 years, he cannot deal with it. You cannot deal with it. He knew exactly what he had to do when he came into the new world. He knew exactly what he had to do with the quote-unquote natives, quote-unquote Native Americans, quote-unquote Paleo-Americans quote-unquote, copper people, quote-unquote, Omic people, Dogon people, Wachita people, Umassi people that's been here for thousands and thousands of years. He knew he had to create closed-door circuit of nothing but bullshit in order for him to create his, quote-unquote, dynasty that's dead. The 586 years of bullshit is over with. He knows it. I know it. The world knows it. It's collapsing as we speak. Most of you that are tied up in your churches, you're looking for something that's going to come out of the sky or something white on a horse or something dead on the cross going to come back and save your black ass. You can forget that. I mean that. You can forget that. Your only salvation is to save yourself. And you can only save yourself. Only weapon you have is your mind. And you refuse to use it 
because they taught you that you did not have to ask. Because if Jesus wanted you to know, he would have told you. When my sister told me that, I wanted to smack the crap out of her. I said, what did you say? You just told me that what I said to you was in the Bible. And I gave it to you from the, from the real. And you told me where to go and find it in the Bible. And I said, well, if what I'm saying is in the Bible, why don't you know it? She said, when Jesus wanted me to know, he'll tell me. I said, who am I? I know I talk ugly and nasty and raw. That's my job. I don't have anything to hide or try to protect. When my mind is clear and my heart and soul is pure, I can say what I want to say. I have no fear in what I'm saying. Something going to happen. That young man I talked to over the weekend, he talked about if he needs something, uh, God will tell Jesus and Jesus will tell him. I said, boy, you, you, you got a problem. You might end up on somebody's psych ward with that crazy ass talk. You just got out of prison. Now you want everybody to be Christian. I said, I probably can see you. I've met a black man. Tear up something and done really show their ass. Put them, put them in jail. They in jail on their knees praying. Oh, Lord, let me get out of this one, and I swear I won't do it again. I ain't going to never drink again. I ain't going to never, never, never. As soon as that punk get out, he right back where he started from. Every, every one of you out there has probably experienced that or seen it. It's nothing to play with. We are in a serious crisis, a very, very serious crisis. Murdering and killing our youth, it ain't nothing new. Oh, don't try to act like, oh, whoa, oh, oh, they done start killing. No, they didn't start killing us. They've been killing us ever since 1800. What about all the burning and looting and raping? What about the South that you know about during the civil rights years? They was hanging people. What about the four girls in the church? They threw a bomb in the church. And you're going to tell me they good? They all are. My, my friend is white. He's good. Come on, y'all. Look what they did to our leaders. Think about that. And every time we ride back in back in the saddle, yeah, yeah, well, this, we got a good guy. This guy knows something. That's what this boy kept telling me. He kept calling off some names. I'm trying to say, who are these people you keep talking about? I ain't never heard of them. He didn't want to say they was white. I forced him to say it. I said, you got to be kidding me. And they're going to tell you how to survive when Granny laid down the foundation and you walked away from Granny? Big Mama had the key. That's why the European destroyed destroyed Big Mama. Now Big Mama's a hoe. Yes, yeah, she is. How did they do it? They put Big Mama, her daughter, and her granddaughter in the same house. They set up rules and regulations that they couldn't get jobs. They couldn't uh, uh, take care of themselves. They threw the men in jail, put them on drugs, get an alcoholic. All of that's by design. We're not a people of, of, of just stone ignorance. We got a lot that are. But most of us are so weak, we can't even see the, the forest for the trees. There's no reason on earth for any police officer to shoot and kill. Look at, look at what they do. Look at what they do. And the system protects them. Or they'll do everything they can to protect them. One of the latest killings in, uh, in uh, Tulsa, Oklahoma, killed that boy. Talk about he was a drug. He got a, a long prison record. Okay, so what? What are you going to do when you can't find a job? Huh? Oh, you don't have to steal. You can go to Mur Murder Burger and work. Kiss Listen to that madness. You can go to Murderburg. You can go to the car wash. Come on. Come on. Oh, you could go back to school and get your degree. The reason he walked away from school because they wasn't teaching him nothing. You let him walk because you didn't teach him the good things that he should know. 
you were just as guilty. You the mama, you was just as guilty because you had him longer than anybody. You turned on your mama, quit visiting. You tore down the culture because you didn't follow the big mama when she told you what to do. I know. You don't want to talk about that. Or big mama wasn't this or big mama wasn't that. That's all we had. Our tribes, our families was the only power base on earth. The first church was your family. What no building, some punk built down on the corner. Oh, I'm going to church. You in church. You in church now listening to me. Oh, I'm going down there to church. All you going to do down there is give up your money so he can ride in a Cadillac and get his lights and gas paid. And you're going to say, well, uh, Jesus or God or somebody going to bless you because you gave up your money. And you'll get it back tenfold. All of those slogans and slangs and sayings were here before the Europeans showed up, before Jesus showed up. All of our ancient gods, all of our ancient kings and queens knew all of that knowledge. They knew how to knew how to create riches and, and, and worldly goods, all those things. You do it with your mind. European came and saw it and started writing it down. Now he's going to turn around and teach it to you, but you got to be a Christian to get it. And you didn't know any better because you, you only, you were taught in the 586 years and you stayed in the 586 years and you in the 586 years right now. That's why you're nervous and scared when you hear me because I'm giving you freedom that ain't in the 500 years because the 500 years is over. His time of ruling is over. He knows it. The only thing that can save him is what he built his so-called empire on. Fear and white racism. What supports fear? Corporations. What supports white racism? Enforcement. Illegal enforcement. Police. All the punks that carry guns. I saw in the paper today that four, listen to this, four Watergate contract agents. You remember Watergate? It got so nasty and, and killing people that they changed their name. Zero Gate. I don't know what they call them now, but they changed their name. Blackwater. I'm talking about Blackwater. The same individuals that came down to... Uh, uh, Katrina and killed all of them black folks down there in Katrina. Yes, yes, yes. They caught one of them on, on tape saying, well, we got to be careful down here. They're only paying us $300 a day. We can make $1,500 a day if we go back to the Middle East. And we can kill at will in the Middle East, but if we fool around and shoot the wrong one over here, we might do some time. Well, they caught four of them. They killed 14 civilians and 21 wounded in Baghdad in 2007, and they put them punks in jail. One of them got life. The other three got 30 years and a day. I didn't never see it on the regular news. I read it this morning on Yahoo, Yahoo News. They say the trial's been going on since 2008. I didn't even know they had indicted them punks. Who owns Watergate? Uh, Watergate. Blackwater. I think his name is Ronnie Green. I'm not sure of his last name, but his first name is Ron. He's married to Amway's wife's sister. Amway gave plenty of money to Bush. Bush gave Ronnie Green a un, no bid contract, eight million dollars cash. Bam! Put it on the table. Create a civilian army. God Almighty. A civilian army. We're gonna let you, a civilian, buy tanks, bazookas, and jet planes. The only civilian on earth that has the power to do that. And they got two training bases. One of them is in California around San Diego, 
and the FBI and CIA train at their base. What kind of mess is this? And the military young folks that went into the military, going over in uh, uh, Baghdad, doing all that killing under Bush, they all complained that they never wanted to go out on patrol with the civilian contractors. Why? They instigated war. If they couldn't find it, they kill civilians. When they put those kids in jail, military kids in jail from Guantanamo, the kids told them, we didn't do it. The civilian contractors did it. And they told us that we had to do it or they was going to put us in a, a, a stockade. Now, if they're doing all that over there, now they're doing the same thing here in U.S. of A. Every one of you saw what they did to that so-called cowboy out there in the, in Vegas area, somewhere out there, out west, when he stole the horse to get away and he didn't know how to ride it, horse threw his ass off. He surrendered, got on the ground before they come and touched him, put his hands behind his back. And one of the officers walked up and kicked him in his private while he was laying face down. You saw it? Don't look at me like I'm starting something. They beat him unmercifully. And then they put the chief on, and his arrogant attitude made them believe, well, he didn't care. He laid later for him. Ain't no big deal. We are the, we are the power to be. And I'll ask you one question. What gives a police officer the power to kill? You don't even know. You ain't never thought about it. I'll ask you another question. Where does a police officer come from? Why is it that you as a citizen don't have any control over the police officer? Why is that? You never thought about it. You fool around and let them push some punk mayor. We saw it here in Detroit. Some bullshit-ass mayor put him in there, and then the corporations say, well, we want this guy to be the chief of police. And the mayor said, yeah, we're going to bring him in. That's how they brought that one we got now. You know Dave Bing don't know nothing, didn't know shit. Unbelievable. The last chief, or one of the last chiefs we had that killed was trying to get on TV and start his own TV show. Went out on the east side and killed that little seven-year-old girl trying to set up the cameras, trying to go to Hollywood. He going to be Sean Connery, some old crazy-ass crap. You saw it. Threw the hand grenade into the house, stood out there for three hours setting it up like it was a trailer. You know what they call it in movies, a trailer. Then everybody got in place, cameras, action, boom, threw the hand grenade in the window. Hit the door with the with the gavel in, and then threw the hand grenade. I mean, threw the shotgun through the window sh and shot the baby in the face, and then told the lie that Granny hit hit his hand to kill. Nobody asked about the tactics. No one questioned the so-called task force that was out there. All they talked about well, Granny hit the gun. If she hadn't have done that, it would have been all right. Some old black woman on TV had the nerve to say. Well, if the daddy hadn't went back down there to the house, the baby would be alive today. What kind of madness can that be? He just got out of jail, the biggest bum in the world, the daddy. They let him out of jail. No job, no income, no insurance, no driver's license, no nothing. Get out of here, you're out of jail. What is he going to do? All he knows is prison life. Come on. Y'all, you don't have to have a PhD to look at this madness. It's all by design. It's all by design. Now, white folks is getting scared because after the killing and these and these and these uh, uh, telephone cameras coming out of, uh, we should have a Memorial Day for. Mr. Brown, down Michael Brown, down in uh, Ferguson, that sundown town, 
the town that has a reputation of shooting black folks after dark. A record of shooting black folks after dark. All of those surrounding cities, I think it's 30 of them, that surround St. Louis are sundown towns. Look it up. Don't look at me like I'm just running my mouth. Look it up for yourself. Sundown town. Look it up. Ferguson led the pack in shooting black people and beating black people after dark. The guy that shot Michael Brown, Wilson, he lived in a, a city 28 miles away, another sundown town. The city was so corrupt that in, I, I can't give it a year, but in 2008, around in there, the federal government came in and told the police chief, you leave and take all these Ku Klux Klan police officers with you. Get the hell out of town, but sundown yourself. This punk went across the street, drove 12, uh, 20 miles, and got hired the next day in Ferguson with a reputation from the federal government that they was running a Ku Klux Klan outfit in another city. Look it up. Read. Google. If you don't want to read, I know you don't like to read. So learn how to use the Internet. Just ask the question, why did Ferguson blow, blow up? Type it in and tap it, and then it'll come up, tell you. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. We're talking we're talking today about private and public jurisdiction. I'd like to ask you, are you living in a private or public jurisdiction? What is a private or public jurisdiction? What is jurisdiction? Jurisdiction is a controlled domain. Let's look up. Look up jurisdiction. And here's how I'm going to do it. I tap it. Go to the internet. And type in. Under, I got Google, so as soon as it comes up, I'll type in jurisdiction. There it is. And if you can't spell it, no big deal, because Google will spell it for you. Just type in there what you think it is. I'm going to go with the first one, jurisdiction. Wikipedia. Let's go with Wikipedia and see what they say. No, no, I just saw legal. Wow. All right, this is a small one. Jurisdiction from a Latin word. I can't pronounce all that. It's the practice. It's a practical authority granted to a former, formerly con constituted legal body or to a political leader to deal with pronunciations of legal matters and by imp implication to administer justice within a defined area of responsibility. The term is also used to, den to denote the geographical area or subject matter to which such authority applies. Areas of jurisdiction apply to local, state, and federal levels. So I'll ask you, do you live in a public or private jurisdiction? I'll answer it. You live in a public jurisdiction. We'll start on the federal level. You live in United States of America, Inc. Public jurisdiction. Whatever they say, listen to this. You dummies, listen. Whatever they say is law. It's legal. Whatever they say is legal. We're on the, we on the federal level now. So all this shit I've been hearing, oh, they can't do that. Oh, I got rights. No, you don't. You don't have any rights in a federal jurisdiction. Federal jurisdiction will give you privileges and benefits. And when you show out like you do, they'll take it away from you. 
And since you are a public piece of crap, they have a right to kill you under, oh, Lord, help me, somebody. I'm on fire today. I am on fire today. I thought I missed it. Here it is. Every one of you heard me talk about library codes. All of y'all just look at it. And you don't say nothing. You just listen. They all, yeah, they run and know a whole lot of shit. No, I don't. What I do know, I only learn it to protect myself and my family. And what's left over, I try to give to you so that you can raise your consciousness enough to try to get where I am. So the Libra Code is one of the most devastating It's an executive order that makes it illegal inside the jurisdiction of the federal government. All executive orders only pertain to those who live in the 10-mile radius of Washington, D.C. Help me, somebody. You don't believe it, huh? I know you don't. So let me go back. And pull up. I, I ran this on. There it is. I ran this on a friend of mine, and they said, "Damn, Ron." Right? I said, "Damn what? Where you get that from?" I said, "I was laying here and just thought about it." Now, if you look up, we're gonna come back to the library code. We're gonna come back to jurisdiction. We ain't went nowhere, but I'm setting it up so you can understand it. We're gonna look up. Title 28, USC, United States Code, Title 28, Section 1746. Let's see if anybody's on there. We got quite a few in the, in the chat room. I'm going to ask you, room, somebody look up Title 26. I mean, excuse me, excuse me. Title 28, USC, Subsection 1746. It's called the unsworn delegation under penalty of perjury. Unsworn delegations under penalty of perjury. Anytime you're dealing with United States of America, Inc., you don't have to get a civilian notary. Hear me clear, clear now. You can type up and use USC 28, subsection 1746, and save that money. Here's what it says. Whenever under any law of the United States or under any rule, regulation, order, or requirement made pursuant to law, any matter is required or permitted to be supported, evidenced, established, or proved by the sworn declaration, verification, certification, statement, oath, or affidavit in writing of the person making the same, parentheses, other than a deposition or an oath of office or an oath required to be taken before a specific official other than a notary, public, closed parentheses. Such matters may, with like force and effect, be supported, evident, established, or proved by the unsworn declaration, certification, verification, or statement in writing. Y'all got to read this thing. It ain't, it ain't that heavy. In writing of such person, which is subscribed by him as true under penalty of perjury and dated in substantially the following form. It would be at the bottom of your paper. It's a declaration of, of penalty of truth under the penalty of perjury. Now, here's where the clicker comes. You either take section one or you will take section two. I'll read section one. If executed without the United States, I declare or certify, verify, or state under the penalty of perjury, under the laws of the United States of America, that the foregoing is true and correct executed on so-and-so date, and sign it. 
if you are inside without means on the outside of, of Washington, D.C., within means you're on the inside of Washington, D.C. So now it says, if executed within the United States, its territories, possessions, or commonwealth, I declare or certify, verify, or state under the penalty of perjury that the far, far going is true and correct. Now notice the difference in the statements of signature. Number one, if you without United States, they mention United States of America. But if you're on the inside, they only talk about United States. Why do you think they do that? I'm laying in bed one morning, and it hit me. I said, oh, my goodness. The Libra Code and this, and this Title 26, I think, what did I tell you it was? Title 26, Title 28, whatever. Title 28, USC. Let me look and see if anybody did it. They logged. Civil chat with me has logged in. Yep. Okay. Nobody has done it yet. I was hoping that they would look up. You are individuals in the chat room, if you have, you're on the computer. See if you can uh, Google Title 28, USC, subsection 1746. Now, let me explain what's going on here. In 1604, England sit, sent a corporation over here to set up a corporation to start a commerce so they could funnel the monies and goods to, to, to Britain, Great Britain. That was the Virginia, Virginia Company. That was the first colony of the 13 colonies. I got the list and the timetables. All of them were here prior to 1800. Okay? They were known once they made friends with the Moors or the natives, whatever you want to call them, that were here. And we talk, when I say natives, I'm talking about everything of color, so called, quote unquote, Indian, Cherokee, and all that stuff. But the Peckwood made that up. But there were uh, tribes. Hundreds, maybe thousands of tribes in the United States. Thousands. And those tribes were families. Families. Just like a family reunion. Families. They were tribes. And they were ran by the matriarch, Big Mama. Every one of the tribes were ran by Big Mama. And the man of the tribe, known as the chief, he was to protect Big Mama. Big Mama made the laws. She laid down the rules. Anyone out there over 50 that knows their mama and grandma, they will tell you, you didn't talk back to Granny. Granny would knock the crap out of you. And if you knew your great-grandmother, oh, baby, baby, you really had a problem. You better not show out. And and they were so powerful that Granny Big Mama down the street in another tribe, if she caught you doing something bad, she would beat your ass and then tell Granny about it, and she would whoop you. And then it came to the daddy. Daddy come home, Grandma called him and said, look here, Ron is out there showing out again today, throwing rocks or whatever I was doing. Then I got another whoop. Is this important because we live in a two country system. We live in America. You and I are right now, we're in America. Then there's the United States. When they set up that corporation, let's back up. Let me back up. America was here all the time. It was known as, among other names, but the most popular name was El Maroc. El Maroc. America. El Maroc. It changed into, over time, America. Okay? 
when they started bringing those colonies in and they worked themselves up to the Declaration of Independence, when those colonies got, just like a European, he done got set up and financed by, by a country, England, and now, Britain rather, and now he's going to turn around and tell Britain to go to hell. So then he, we taught them how to do it, and they had to declare their freedom. They had to go on paper. You must declare your freedom. Every one of you out there right now listening to me, you got so many complaints, and you're so mad at the system. Police department, school, water, uh, uh, utility. You're so mad, you're just going mad. You're going bonkers. I guarantee none of you ever declared in writing that you was pissed off. Even when you go out in the street and demonstrate, did you go home and write a letter to the people and say, kiss it where the sun don't shine, I'm tired of your mess? No. When you're in a corporation and they, Europeans, had a right to change the United States, we gave them the power to create the United States. George Washington was the first president of the United States. Okay? But what they did through municipal government, especially after they got past 1800 and made us go to school, they even said George Washington was the first president of the United States of America. Bullshit. Lincoln was probably the first or the one. Garfield was in before Lincoln. I don't know who was in office in 18. I think it was Garfield was in office in 1871. He was the first president of the United States of America, Inc. Now, when we go back, it says, it tells you right here in writing, if you live outside of the United States, under the penalty of perjury, under the laws of the United States of America that are foregoing in truth and correct. So they hooked it up in number one to call you the United States of America over here, which is not. We're in America. Then if they say you live within the United States, they don't say United States of America. It says if executed, if exec, executed, excuse me, within the United States, its territories, possessions, or commonwealth, all it says is I declare under the penalty of perjury that the foregoing is true and correct. Now that tells me that they knew they were going to have a problem in al Marak. So in order to set up the rules, they came up with the library codes. I said all of that to get to the library code. They had to have some type of rule that would help them kick ass and take names and prepare for someone out there like you, better yet, someone out there like me with a big mouth to come forward in 2015 and declare my freedom. They had to have something set up to stop me. Oh, I can see it so clear. That's why I can run this shit. I'm living it. When I tell you, I'm living in it. I got a little neck. I can go back and get in that shit. So when you go and pull up the library codes, I did. A, I have a good one here. It's called General Orders Number One Hundred. The library code. It's the first executive order by the President of the United States of America. It's the Constitution of America. And it's broken down into, I'm not going to count it, but it looks like it's got to be at least, eh, maybe I wouldn't, yeah, I'll count it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. It's broken down into ten sections. Oh, I can see it right there. i show you how dumb I am. I didn't do it. Look over here. It covers damn near everything a uh, invasion government, an uh, illegal government, it covers everything it will need in order to keep you in bondage when you wanted to or asked to or demanded to be free. And to show that it works, 
they use this lab of code. I don't know what year they opened up the Guantanamo down there, that, that illegal prison, but they opened it under Executive Order 100. And nobody in Congress stood up and say, hey, that ain't got nothing to do with a Cuba. That ain't got nothing to do with foreigners. They didn't say shit. Joe didn't. You didn't say nothing because you didn't know. Now, when you go into this library code, it's broken down into sections. Section number one is the main section because it talks about martial law, military jurisdiction, military necessity, and retaliation. Y'all hear me? Number one, section one, martial law. Think about the riot that was in a couple of years ago that was in your town. They declared martial law. Behind martial law comes military jurisdiction. What does that mean? Since they declared martial law, they set up a jurisdiction. Anyone within the areas, they'll show you the boundaries of the martial law. You do what I say. Oh, I live there. I don't give a damn. Get on that bus. We taking your ass over here in the field, taking you to bail out. And if you refuse, they can shoot you. Shoot you because you are in their jurisdiction. Public, of course, but you don't know that. You don't know the difference between public and private. Help me, somebody. Any callers? No callers. I'm telling you, this stuff is deep, y'all. I'm trying to work two, I'm working two, two computers. So let's step in. Article 1 has, I mean, uh, Section 1 has 30 articles. And we're talking about martial law. Now, ever since anyone that hears me tonight, ever since you've been on earth, I don't give a damn who you are, Ever since you have been on earth, you have been under martial law, which brings on military jurisdiction, which brings on military necessity, which brings on retaliation. What does that mean? When they killed that boy, told that boy to stop, he didn't stop, shot him in the ass with that laser, Pull out that pistol and shot him. He's under martial law. He has a legal right. And we're not talking about lawful. We're not talking about uh, truth, justice, and equality. We're talking about color of law. They make up the laws as they go along. Notice how they always cover the police officer. Before it even gets in the news, they try to figure out how to cover the police officer. The one in North Carolina, they were setting up the lie and did not know they was on TV at the time. Now they got a problem because all them crooks that were buddies with the old, the secret old, that already said that whatever they said, that he was a, a, a good kill, they didn't know they was on film. Now, Guy jumped at me, was that this morning? I think it was yesterday, whatever. Well, the federal government is going to get them. No, they're not. Because they will always try, if any cop that makes a mistake, he will always be tried locally. Because he wants to stay in his jurisdiction. He knows he has rights in his jurisdiction that will save his ass. Once there's a judgment in his jurisdiction, Holder knew when he left Washington that he was a prick. He couldn't do shit. But he had to play the game to keep y'all asleep. Uh, keep y'all asleep. <clears throat> because if he'd have brought charges on a murder, they call that double jeopardy. He can't do that. So the only thing he can get him on is unlawful death which brings on a violation of civil rights. And the only equity in civil rights is money. (laughs) 
<laughs> man, oh man. Oh Lordy, I was told about six months ago that somebody sent me a email, a video, and it, it showed a police officer pistol whipping or beating a suspect. And the police officer had, I want y'all to remember this, the police officer had his camera was on. He knew it was on. So they've already practiced on how to deal with it when it's on. So what he did, he reached and grabbed and yanked the brother towards him and cold cocked him. And as he was whooping him with that stick, he, the cop was screaming, stop resisting. And every time he hit him, the brother would fall and jerk and fall and jerk. And you would think the brother was trying to get away. But the cop is screaming, screaming into the camera and the microphone that I'm only trying to, pursue, to uh, pursue you, but you keep running and getting away, and he's beating the hell out of it. Justifiable ass whooping, they call it. Cops ain't stupid. Now look what happened in Oklahoma. The tough, yeah. Here's a 73-year-old cop, 73 years old. He wasn't even a cop. He was a rental pig, a 73-year-old rental pig working with the police department. You know he had to be a nasty ass. 73 years old. He's out on a sting operation under a black criminal who's going to sell him gun and ammunition. 73 years old. Well, I don't know what went wrong, but that brother saw, smelled, smelled a pig and jumped out and started running. When they all got there and caught him, the 73-year-old pulls out his pistol, shoots him, and then screams, oh, I'm sorry, I used the wrong, I pulled out the wrong gun. And that's the first thing they talked about, that feel sorry for the 73-year-old because he pulled out the wrong gun and he was up, so upset he shot and killed him while the man was laying on the ground. And he was surrounded by other police officers. Why did he pull out a gun anyway? So now, in order to protect him, they got to charge him with something so that the feds don't come and get him and give him life for murder. So I understand. I heard they're going to charge him with manslaughter. I think you can get six months with a minimum sentence on that six months. I don't crazy. But they know what they're doing. Now, let's take a look at Gardner in New York strangled him with the cigarette, couldn't breathe. The prosecutor said no charges. Prosecutor lived, his jurisdiction was Staten Island. Staten Island's 85% Peckerwood, and 80% of the Peckerwood are right wing Republicans and Tea Party. In that jurisdiction. Now you tell me how he's going to bring charges against the police officers when his political base is Staten Island. You know, y'all need to wake up. And there's no reason why somebody don't set up with these jack leg ass preachers. They know what I know. They know it. They claim they went to school. Half of them got degrees, PhDs. The most big ass niggas got got PhDs and big boulets. Why don't they set up a jurisdiction and elect the people they need in the jurisdiction? Starting with the sheriff. Please site. Set up what you want in your jurisdiction. Oh, help me, somebody. Oh, they want to get on TV and saying we shall overcome. Have a midnight uh, ver a vigil, vigil. All that crazy crap. Article 1. I just told you everybody lived today is living under. Even your daddies lived under martial law. And there's a reason for them. Always, every president since Lincoln have all declared martial law because they are under, they call this 
the Emergency Act. I wonder if they got it on here. I know it's Executive Order Number One, One Hundred, the Library Code. Instruction for the government of armies of the United States in the field. Prepared by Francis Liber. Prom- promulgated as General Order Number 100 by Lincoln, the 24th of April, 1863. Now, kicked in number one. Article one, I'll just, I'm not going to read all this, but they got a couple of good ones. A place, district, or country occupied by an enemy stands in consequence of the occupation under martial law of the invade, invading or occupying army. Rather, any proclamation declaring martial law or any public warning to the inhabitants has been issued or not, martial law is the immediate and direct effect and consequence of occupation or conquest. That sounds like some movie. Every police station is an occupied army in your community because the occupied army, I mean, the police station in Detroit is in America, not United States. They're protecting United States and they're in Detroit. They are an evading army all across the country, not only here. And I'm only talking federal level. That's why during uh, Michael Brown, they were talking about uh, giving up uh, old holder, going to give up $80 trillion so they can buy bulletproof vests and at those uh, those cameras and stuff. That makes it federal. So now the federal government has the jurisdiction to dictate to the police, all corporations, 501c3, all the way up to General Motors, belong to United States of America. You hear me? Man, oh, man, oh, man. Man, oh, man, oh, man. Article 2. Martial law does not cease during the hostile occupation except by special proclamation. What is a proclamation? A statement by an elected official. Emancipation proclamation. They announce only announced that slaves are free. They didn't put nothing behind it. It was just a public announcement. Special proclamation ordered by the commander-in-chief or by special mention in the Treaty of Peace concluding the war. When the occupation of a place or territory continues beyond the conclusion of peace, as one of the conditions of the same. Now you can look at what they're doing in Baghdad. The war is over, quote unquote. They're still over there food with the people. Now they're in a, a pickle because the people are tired of them, been tired of them all the time. Now they've created a unified army. Taliban, I can't call them all. All of that. They all join in to come up with one army known as ISIS. And now the United States is mad. And the truth is, or it's been said, that I, uh, CIA set it up. Because they had to create an enemy. Oh, help me somebody. Wow. Wow. All right, listen. As soon as I get the engineer, we're going to take a break. Right now, we're still talking about jurisdiction. You got to understand the power of jurisdiction. And the reason is because all of this killing is within these particular jurisdictions where the victim is not aware 
that he has violated some rule or regulation or some statute in the jurisdiction. Now, it's very important to understand that each state has a constitution. In the constitution, since you are a ward of the state, since the birth certificates are dealing with the state constitution, your rights lies in the state constitution. So if we would switch, and I'm going to drop this library code and, and jurisdiction, and I'm going over to what we have here. There we go. I'm going over to the Michigan 1850, the Michigan's 1850 Constitution. You want to get the oldest Constitution that you can find in your state. Every one of them. If you get the oldest you can find, you can move forward. And testing, we're back in, we're back on, Wally. I believe we're back on. All right, ladies and gentlemen, still got 40 minutes. Looks like we're back on. Sorry about that, I have no idea. But of course, you know that it could be any, we were doing so good, it could be any reason. Yep, went out by itself, it's back on now. Okay. Back on now. I need, I need to get to the Constitution of Michigan, 1850. Now I said you need to be sure when you look up your own state constitution, try and stay in the antebellum. Antebellum are the years prior to 1865, and it's very important that you do that because the year. Now, first thing I do here is now I'm going to go down and come back to the quorum because there's a very important there's a very important uh, issue that's in the there, not there, not here. In the Constitution, where you had Constitution, there it is. Now, I've got to figure out how to stop this thing. Okay. Now, there is a law called Rule 5.1. You know, maybe you should get a pencil and paper when I come on the air because. 5.1 is a uh, civil proceeding rules of ci civil proceedings. It's called 5.1. You need to know this. Why? Because statute is not a law. A statute is a proposal that they want to make into a law. And are not, all statutes have not become laws because they did not vote them into uh, let of statute. You say law, they are not. A statute is just a proposal. Now, what you need to know and study is Rule 5.1. It's called the constitution to a statute. When you get stopped for any particular reason, may it be traffic or whatever, they will immediately tell you you violate a law. And you'll say no. So they'll say to you, you violated, you were speeding. Don't get smart with you were speeding. Okay. Now, 
you're caught between a rock and a hard place because number one, a, 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 a traveler can never speed. All the traffic pertains to is whatever you were stopped for, and they tell you you were speeding, and you say, I was traveling. They say, well, tell it to the judge because you were doing 40 over the speed limit. You're going to look up. It has nothing to do with you if you are traveling. What's the difference between traveling and commercial? Traveling, let's go commercial first. All commercial vehicles have a number one. They're called driver. All commercial vehicles are called a driver. Number two, all commercial vehicles are out to make. They're out for hire. If you're going to get free, you got to know this, and it's simple. The only law you can make as a sovereign or a private person or private individual. Private is murder or destroying someone's property. Those are the only rules that come in law. Two common law you have to be concerned about someone or destroying someone's property. Those are the only laws. Everything else is statutory. I know. You don't a bit more believe me in a man's moment. And I can understand it. It's not hard. I mean, it's not easy to learn this, this crap. It's not easy at all. I'm giving you the rule that you can check you don't have to believe me. But all you have to do is look up the, the violation under Michigan compiled laws, whatever they charge you with. And then you're going to challenge that law. Because you say it's a private, uh, I mean, a public law, and public laws does not pertain to private persons. Now, listen to this. A notice by a party. Now you're going to challenge a law. Let's say speeding, for example. The party that files the pleading, I'm going to file the pleading. Written motion or other paper drawing into question. I'm questioning what you charging me with. I want to know the constitutionality of a federal or state statute most properly, properly. Number one, file a notice of constitutional question stating the question and identifying the paper that raises it. So the paper that raised it would be your, your uh, charge, speeding. Now, were you speeding on a state highway, a federal highway? Who's writing the charge? A, a state police? Uh, local police, county police, whatever. So you go to this rule. Now, you'll serve the notice and paper to the Attorney General of the United States if a federal statute is questioned. But you're going to question, question we're going to question a state statute, so they're both the same. Technically, they're both the same. But you're going to question a state statute either by certified or registered mail or by sending it to an electronic address designated by the attorney general for the purpose. It's got to be certified by the court. The court must, under Title 28 U.S.C. section subsection 2403, certify to the appropriate attorney general that a statute has been questioned. You're going to question that statute, which sets, shuts down the court. Now, 
you have to question it 10, I mean, seven to 10 days before your court date. And you have to put it in a special appearance, which is a writing, that you're going to do that. It's got to be done prior to you going to court. You can't go into court and start raising this sand. You have to respect the court. Is their shit. Now, you put it in writing seven to ten days prior to that you're going to exercise rule 5.1. Uh, now, here's what are the rules of your state. I'm going back to, I don't know how to do it, but I'm going back to uh, Michigan Constitution. I'm going to try and find there it is. I think I just passed. See what that was. What does it take to make a statue? Homestead. That's not it. Okay. At least everybody hears it. You know that I'm not doing it. They are knocking me off of my square. Knocking me off of my program. Okay, there it is. Now, I found the Michigan rule to make is Section 19 of, of the Michigan uh, 1850. Listen to this. Every bill and joint resolution, which is statute, shall be read three times in each house before the final passage thereof. No bill or joint resolution shall become a law without the concurrence of a majority of all the members elected to each house. On the final passage of all bills, the votes shall be by yeas and nays and entered into the journal. So, a statue is nothing more than a bill or a joint resolution. And in order for it to become law of the state, it must be read three times in each house. There's two houses in each state, the Senate and the House of Representatives. No bill or joint resolution shall become a law without the concurrence of a majority of all the members elected to each house. So they're talking about all the members who are elected. You must have a quorum. You can't have a night, a midnight meeting at Harry's Bar with 10 or 12 House or Senate people and vote on something to change it. It has to be read openly in each house. Three times. Now, think about that. It takes a while to read anything in any house three times. Now, subject of the bills, titles, and effective date. This is important because once it's passed, no law shall embrace more than one object. You have to, all right, listen. No law shall embrace more than one object which shall be expressed in its title. No public act shall take effect or be in force until the expiration of 90 days from the end of the session at which the same is passed. So if they, the end of the session is normally, I think is normally uh, uh, December 31st. Okay. Now you have to find out when is your when when do they when does their section session not section session end. So if it ends on December thirty first and they vote on January first of the same year and they do it all correctly, the bill cannot go into effect until 90 days after December 31, so you don't have to worry about that bill until January, February, March 31. 
anytime after March 31, you can anytime after March 31, you can expect that bill to go in effect. And I guarantee you, 99% of all the laws that you are under that's putting us in jail, taking our money, stealing our cars through the insurance policy, none of them are legal. Or better yet, excuse my words. None of them are lawful. They all are legal because no one is challenging. All of them under are under the color of law. Even your insurance policy, the high rates that we have, they should be challenged under Rule 5.1. Follow me? Now, this is not difficult. We don't have to really, we don't really have to go through a big song and dance on this. I don't know any more than anyone else. I just discovered this through research. I was told about it. I did my research. I got a new one that I'm working on now that's going to knock the cover off of numerous individuals in Detroit. I'll give you a hint. I hate to change the subject, but bankruptcy. I'll give you a hand. Bankruptcy. Everyone that's filed bankruptcy needs to send me an email. And I have a good program. And I'll send you the law that backs up what I'm going to tell you. So if you complete it, I should say if you completed your bankruptcy, not started, complete it and got a good discharge, or got a discharge, and all of them are good, and got a discharge, you need to email me. Well, tomorrow morning, I'm going to start. Do I have time? Oh, I just thought about it. I won't be able to start it, but I'll be able to answer anybody that emails them. Ron March Show at yahoo.com. Okay. All right, so what I'm really doing, what I'm really doing is we're talking about private and public jurisdiction. I'm trying to stay with that because all of the laws that we have been murdered with are only statues. And quit telling me it's a law. It's not a law. That's why you see them giving you tickets for certain things, but don't give the people that look like them tickets for certain things. That's why they zero in on the black communities across Michigan, such as this new so-called task force on insurance scams. Do you know that that multi- jurisdictional, talking the same talk, multi-jurisdictional task force, what it's called, multi-jurisdictional task force, to prevent insurance scams. They got a new meters in certain cars that they can punch up your license plate and it'll tell them if you have good or bad insurance. But this so-called trilateral, multilateral, multilateral jurisdictional task force they're only looking at oh, Hamtramck, poor, River Rouge, poor, and Highland Park, poor. Come on, y'all. What the hell are you thinking? You can't see that they're earmarking poor people? Somebody help me. Help me, somebody. I'm telling you, this is this is this is mean, illegal, mean, and very, very what would they call it? Dangerous. Because you're crowding people into a corner. And by doing that, you're causing a major you're causing a major crisis in these families. 
I had a brother today that drove all the way to Plymouth, Michigan, because he got pulled over for driving slow because he was turning the corner and looking for an address. They didn't give him a ticket for speeding. They gave him a ticket for impeding traffic. And he said, Ron, I'm fighting this baby. I said, damn. Going into the devil's workshop, he said, I don't give a damn. I'm tired of this shit. They wanted $140 for impeding traffic. He looked it up, pulled up the, 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 the MCL. Impeding traffic means that you have parked your vehicle or stopped your vehicle in such an area that you have caused an accident. There should have been something coming, like a, a record or a, a ambulance or something. None of that showed up because the police officer was following him so close that he turned when he turned his corner, he pulled over to see what her problem was. And she commenced to talk in all kind of yang-yang and ended up giving him a ticket for impeding traffic. Well, he won. Brother was determined. He was geeked. When I saw him today, he was geeked that he ain't through with it. Boy. Now, he does some reading. He did research. He did a, he did a damn good job. So congratulations, brother. Congratulations. All right. Now, we're talking about jurisdiction. I think we should have that information by now. What is a jurisdiction? I read that to you. It's a designated area by someone in power. Someone in power that can truly set up a territory that they control through legislation or elected. You know, it doesn't really have to be that. You have jurisdiction of your home if you do how to set it up. No one has a right to come into your home. No one has a right to come on your property. That is your jurisdiction. But if your mentality is a public citizen rather than a private indigenous person, you're going to have a problem. So don't come calling me. Ryan, you said they couldn't come up in the yard. Yes, yes. Forget that. Don't even call me. Because everything is set up by contract. Now, listen to this. All you smarty pants out there, listen to this. When a police officer pulls you over and walks up to your car, you roll down the window. You say, yes, sir, or whatever. He say, can I see your license and registration? You say, why? Did I do something wrong? He'll say, you were speeding. And you'll say, when, where, or I did not. Either one of those answers is an affirmative that you recognize his offer that you were speeding puts you into a commercial jurisdiction just by opening up your damn mouth. You created a contract with him. You want me to say it again? He walks up to your car. You say, may I see your driver's license registration and insurance? You say, well, did, is something wrong, sir? He said, yeah. You were speeding. You say, no, I wasn't. You say, well, the sign said 30. You were doing 65. I wasn't going that fast. I was only doing about 10. You say, give me your shit. I don't want to hear no more of your lip. You have put yourself in his jurisdiction on a oral agreement. What you should have said, I beg your pardon. He says you were speeding. He said, I can't be speeding. Why not? Because I'm traveling, asshole. There's no rules in the Michigan law on traveling. Hello? Now, he's not going to be the smartest, the sharpest knife in the drawer. He may say to you, well, listen, I don't want to hear the shit. Give me that, what I asked for, or I'm going to run your ass in. You got to give it to him. He's got a gun. 
Why are you going to stand there and argue with him on the street? But once you give it to him, you can say to him very polite, I believe you're making a mistake. And leave it alone. You go back. Now, if your paperwork is in order, as I'm saying to you on your birth certificate, it's in order. Listen to the word I use. Birth certificate is in order. He go back and put your name, rank, and serial number in the machine. It should tell him, leave that nigga alone. Hello? It should say. But if it don't, don't worry about it. Keep your mouth shut. Don't create any type of belligerent backtalk bullshit that normally 9 out of 10 of y'all, you people do. You cannot win any argument with those idiots with guns. None. Just shut up. You say, well, tell it to the judge. Say, yes, sir, I will, and I hope you'll be there. I'll be there. Now you got him. You got his badge number. You got his violation. He violated your right. He gave you the, the ticket in all capital letters. You are not all capital letters. He gave it to your straw man. You don't you don't belong to the straw man. You only control the straw man. You're gonna put all that in your special invitation seven to ten days before your trial. They don't give you a trial. Good. You call up the next day and say, I have a ticket, I want a court date. They may tell you, like they told me, we don't give out court dates until you are in default. Now, there is an answer for that because you have a right, according to lending, a Truth and Lending Act. I had that in front of me. The Truth and Lending Act says You can, that's a federal law, you can cancel any contract in three days within 72 hours. So you can write on that ticket, I refuse to contract with you, date it, sign it, and send it in by certified mail. Y'all need to study. I see y'all now looking up here at me like I'm crazy. I'm telling you what I know. I see now I have a caller. Let's check this caller out. See if I can get it. Yes, caller, you're on the line. Is that me, Rob? Yes. You have a oh, question. Oh, really? Our... How are you? I I'm was um, listening to the Good. I was listening to the show, and I was just hearing you say that um, when they come up to your window, um, you you end up contracting with them. Now, I was just trying to figure out how did I do that when they pulled me over for um, the license plate light bulb being burned out. Did I contract with them by saying that I, I, didn't, my, I didn't know my car was equipped with that? Well, you have to is that remember, how I, I, know, I, know, I know what incident you're talking about. And you, yes, you created the contract because you was on public street driving a public vehicle and you and your light was out. Now, they should or could have given you a courtesy ticket, but there had to be something that was said, and I'm just speculating, that triggered all of that that I know happened, and I have no idea what that was. But you had not created a contract when you said, I did not know it was busted. Now... What happened next? Then they asked for a driver's license, registration, and insurance. Yes. And then you did not have that. Am I correct? Correct. All right. So now you only thing you could have done was took the ticket or took whatever they gave you because you were not in a position to be driving. And I know this on a personal tip. From what we know now, don't get me wrong. Now I'm not trying to be a smart alley. But from what we know now, we know that you were not protected properly by not having those things. However, when you went to court, you could have sent a 
a, a, a special invitation and use the Treaty of Articles and Confederation, Article 4, that says you have a right to proceed from point A to point B. They call it ingress and regress without being tampered with. So that means that you did not have to have driver's license and all that stuff in order to proceed on the highways. But it was no place for you to argue that point on the street. Does that okay. make sense? Well, I haven't been to court yet. Okay. But then the date, what date do you have? I haven't gotten one yet. All right. When you get a date, you need to start preparing your special appearance now. And you need to talk to your friend and mine, Mr. MC, uh, MR. You know what I'm talking about. The one that drives you crazy, drives us both crazy. He has a Michigan law that says that you can go from point A to point B without any in tampering with. And if you call me tomorrow okay. or email me, I'll give it to you. And you need to get okay. that ready as soon as. You get your court date. You need to get that invitation in. Okay. Okay? Okay. Okay, I will do that. I will give you a call tomorrow. Okay, beautiful. Okay. So now you Thank begin you. to see what I'm talking about in order to, if you're going to fight them, you got to come at them, you know, a little bit right. professional. That's all I can say. You definitely do right. not want to argue with any of them pigs in the street. Never. Mm-mm. Never. Never. Mm-mm. Never. Now with all the, the killing advantage. and shooting that they doing, all the killing yes. and shooting they doing today, oh no. Oh no. Oh no. All right, sister. I appreciate you. Okay. Call. All right, brother. I'll talk to you. Why do? Okay. Why do? All right. Now, that was beautiful. And she will call me tomorrow. I know who that was. She's in Detroit. She is a fighter. She deals with a lot of situations. And uh, we're going to deal with that. And I'll get her some information and some laws. Now, these laws that I'm telling you about are missing to you. Every state has them, but you got to know how to find them. Now, the guy that I mentioned, I called him M.R. He is a, he's a go-getter when it comes to finding these laws and rules. He gave me some uh, that I have right now that I'm telling you. It will blow your mind. That's why I tell you, everything that they've done to you, I don't give a damn what it is, up to up, up limited to killing or beating you, or beating you half to death, limited that. But everything they've done in the system is by color of law. And most of you out there have never heard of color of law. You need to look it up. It's a legal term that is used by corporations. And it means something like the straw man. It it means that it sounds like a real law, but it's not it's not real. Uh, how they get away with it is a different ballgame. But I can guess they can get away with it because they have public jurisdiction. And the jurisdiction is supported by the municipal contract known as 1871 Constitution of United States of America. I hope I'm saving somebody's life tonight. Because you young cats arguing about something that's true. You can forget it. There's nothing in the United States of America, Inc., that is righteous and true. They don't have to listen to your sorry ass talking about I got rights. You ain't got no damn rights because you're a public citizen, 14th Amendment at that. They have a right. That's an animal. They have a right to take you in the yard, shoot you, put you on the ground, and the shit's over with. And the reason they don't do it is such an outcry of inhumane treatment. They don't want you to know that they're that raw and that ugly to do it. But they have a history of doing it because they burn up, they hung us, they burn us, they cut off our privates, they wore them around their neck, they cut off the women's stuff, 
hung it around it all. Oh, please don't even go there with me. And don't bring up the book because that ain't saved nobody yet. They gave you that and beat it into you with 1724, the Christian black codes. And if you didn't, look at the movie Roots. If you didn't go into Jesus, they, they kill you. And they use the Catholic Church to justify killing you. Catholic Church. And you niggas are sitting up in there talking about we should overcome and singing to that bullshit. God damn it. I'm glad the show's over. I done got mad as a hoot owl. I'm not mad. I just get geeked. I'm not mad or anything. But y'all got to start waking up. It's not going to save you to hang on to them. They are dead. 586 years is over with. I'm telling you. I'm telling you it's over with. So, here's what we're going to do. We're going to be on tomorrow night. 